Now, when you hear about gentrification, you, you normally hear it in a negative context. Gentrification is negative, we're told. Gentrification is pushing out poor communities, in particular, ethnic minorities and black communities. This is what you hear. But in this video, I'm gonna suggest that gentrification is actually a good thing. The issue is that communities are not prepared to take advantage of the opportunities that come. So gentrification can be defined as the influx of investment and infrastructure building and all those kinds of things which flood into an area which result in more people coming to an area from different parts of the country which result usually in higher prices and inflation of property prices and other kinds of prices which can eventually change the demographic picture of the particular area. Now many parts of London have experienced this. Hackney, where I first lived, the first place I lived in London was in Hackney in Clapton and Hackney I was to find out you know, once I came back to London from uni, I found out that Hackney is a well desirable area to live in. Whereas when I was a youth, Hackney was definitely not that. Hackney was ghetto with a capital toe. And same with, I mean, it's happening in Wood Green, it's happening in Tottenham, it's happening in Harlesden, it's happening in Peckham, it's happening in Brixton. Who benefits from gentrification. So first, of course, the property developers, they benefit massively from building these properties and then selling them, selling them off at massively inflated prices. But also local people benefit. Yeah, I said it, local people, people benefit. Why? Because gentrification, when you talk about investment coming into a particular area, usually ends up with more services on offer, more products on offer. For people who are business owners in that local area, gentrification usually, or should in theory, result in more people to sell their produce and goods to and services to, which means more profit-making ability. It should, in those senses, gentrification can be a positive thing for people who live there. But generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that black people in particular are not benefiting from gentrification in those areas that I've mentioned and other areas around the country as well. Black people in those areas are unable to get onto the so-called property ladder because the what happens is when more services and more investment comes in and all this sort of stuff comes into an area, then obviously more people want to move there. It's a basic supply and demand thing. When you've got a fixed supply of something, so in this case, a location, there's only a certain amount of square miles in Brixton, for example, that people want to be living in. But then you've got an increased demand, i.e. more and more people want to move in, then by definition, the price to be able to rent or to be able to buy in that fixed location has to go up because you can't make more land in Brixton. There's only one Cold Harbour Lane. There's only one Leighton High Road. There's only one whatever it might be. You know, there's only, there's only one Peckham, Central Peckham. So more and more people wanting to come in means that the prices in Peckham have to go up. And unfortunately, black people find themselves massively priced out of those local areas. I've talked about how a house in Leighton, anywhere near Leighton Station or close to Stratford, or any part of Leighton really, to buy a three bedroom house, you're gonna be paying well north of half a million pounds, probably more closer to a million pounds in a nicer house. And whereas on a high road, you might have had loads of black businesses, black shops, hairdressers, food shops, this, that, and the other record shops, what usually happens as the demand goes up and the infrastructure starts getting built and all this sort of stuff, those shops gradually close down one by one. Now, the basic reason that black people are not in a position to benefit from gentrification of our areas is because we are too fragmented as a community. And I don't mean this in some weird way, like, oh, we've got to start to join political parties and whatnot. No, no, I just mean in a very basic level. Let's look at those people who are moving into your Hackneys and your Brixtons and your Tottenhams from they're coming in from outside London. They're coming in, mainly, these are mainly white people coming from, you know, your home counties and up north and all this sort of stuff. And when you talk to them and you get to know them, these are, you know, they're perfectly, you know, nice people. They're, they're excited to come to London and experience London. And you hear their stories. They're all, or mostly university graduates. They've lived at home with their parents. Their parents have helped them through university, helped them with moving to London. You know, they maybe help them still, you know, while, they're, while they are in London. What's, what do they have that we don't have? They have families who are together. Parents who are together usually, or at the very least they have families who have assets that they can liquidate to support their children. They have families who would have had saving schemes for them, investment schemes for them. They helped to pay them through university. You know, they, they took all of that financial burden away from them and that meant that they were able to 
freely find themselves, go to uni, you know, study, develop themselves and so on. And then now they can move into London. That's not a bad thing, but unfortunately, very few black people fall into that kind of category. In London in particular, hardly any black people own property in London, hardly any black people own property in, 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 the, in the UK overall, particularly younger black people. And as I've talked about in the previous video about black wealth, is there a black middle class in the UK? We have very few assets to liquid liquidate in order to help our children. And so when you're growing up in your Hackneys and your Brixtons and so forths, and you're seeing the prices go up, you're seeing all these things happen, what can you do? You're, you, you're in your one job on your own. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't afford it. So of course, you're not going to be able to benefit from it. Same goes with the businesses as well. Those businesses are working so hard. We need black businesses to succeed. But unfortunately, those black businesses are not supported by families, generally speaking. They're not supported by families working together. If you compare it with our Asian brethren, you know, from Pakistan and India and, and Beng Bangladesh, you look at the stories behind these shops, you'll find whether it is pharmacies, retail outlets and so forth, they're being supported by families, by uncles, by aunties. They've all got a stake in that business quite often. Not all of them, but quite often that's the case. And so they can sustain when it comes, when there's troubled times that comes, when there are recessions, when there are slowdowns, they're in a much better position to ride through the storm and then benefit from the gentrification that kind of comes up. They can pay the inflated rent prices or they even own their own buildings and they're able to take advantage of the increased footfall by selling to those people. The solution is to go back to basics. The, the solution is to pool our resources. The solution is to start families. The solution is to start marrying one another. The solution is to start utilizing things like partners, cooperative economic tools like that, credit unions and so forth, which black people in the UK actually pioneered, by the way, black Caribbeans pioneered and opened, created the first credit unions in the United Kingdom. Those are the things that we need to do. And that's going to be, the, these are the key messages that you're going to find in all of my videos is looking at all of these different issues to do with house ownership and financial literacy and, you know, whatever it might be. You're looking at all these things that are happening in the black community here in the UK. In my opinion, the solution to all of these issues is the same few things. Cooperative economics, family building, family repairing family relationships. Those are the things that we need to do to give us the ability to be able to thrive and prosper while we are in this country. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do like this video and like vid you want to see more videos like this, then bust the like button, please. Press the like button and also make sure you subscribe and also check out some videos as well. I've talked about the video I did on the black middle class in the UK. Check that one out here. And then also, if you'd like to check this video out here, which YouTube will recommend, I'm sure we'll have a great time watching those videos. All right. Take care. And I look forward to your comments and insights as usual in the in the comment section below. And I'll see you for the next video.